All right. Well, thank you guys for having me. TGIF, thanks uh, Friday. I'm so glad. Anyways, um, so I guess you guys are studying about color, and you'll notice that uh, one thing I love uh, is color. Oh my God, I love it so much. Um, so a little background about me. Um, for as long as I can remember, I've always drawn and painted, even when I was a kid. Um, I always wanted to create. I always wanted, like, even in high school, you know, when I went to, I went to Wilson High School. Uh, when I went to Wilson, you know, I was making movies and, and doing all kinds of things. And that's basically what I wanted to do for my life is I wanted to be a filmmaker. And um, I was in my, like, I was about 22 and I was about to go to Art Center Design Film School, uh, which is up in Pasadena. And um, I got really sick. And what happened was um, I have lupus, which is an autoimmune disease, and uh, basically ended up laying on my parents' floor for two years. I was on chemotherapy, and it was a really hard time in my life. And um, so during that time, you know, I was trying to figure out, you know, well, I'm not going to be able to, I couldn't go to school. I, you know, it kind of changed my whole priorities in life and what, what I was going to do. And while I was, you know, you know, while I was in bed, I just had all these ideas that I still wanted to create and stuff. And um, so I just started painting is what I did. I would just literally like be in bed and I'd have canvases and I'd start painting. And so that's what I, at the beginning, um, like in my early 20s when I started to create again, was I don't know, emotion going on. And I, I used acrylic paint, which is a water-based paint because oil paint can be messy and do different kinds of stuff. So I would just, you know, go crazy and, and paint and, you know, whatever came out, came out. And it was very, very wild and vivid because at the time, you know, I was going through all this different crazy stuff. And um, so a lot of it was abstract. Actually, a lot of my work is abstract, not really figurative based. I mean, I, like I said, I love color and I love motion. and. For me, the most important thing when I'm creating is for myself. Now, as I've, as I've been doing this for about 25 years, um, you know, I've been like selling work and being in galleries and stuff, which is cool, you know? I mean, it's really nice to be <clears throat> recognized for what you do, but the bottom line is if you guys want to create, do it for yourself. I mean, that's the most important thing because like later on I'd start thinking like my next series, like, oh, what would the public like? Or, you know, and once you start getting into that, you just, you know, like I said, the first, the most important thing is you should do it for yourself because it's super important. And um, so, so after about two years, uh, you know, things started to calm down for me as far as, you know, being healthy. And then I got to uh, <laughs> move out of my parents' house and, and actually uh, get married and stuff. And things were calming down. And I ended up being the stay-at-home dad. Hi, Dad. Which worked out really right good because I could, you know, work at home and take care of the kids. And so I started thinking about other types of stuff that I could create. Now, I always come from a photographic background because I wanted to make films, I love photography. So I tried to learn about all the rules, like all the rules about photography, like f-stops and shutters and all that stuff. I mean, I devoured it. And this was kind of before the internet, so I read a lot of books and stuff. But, you know, learning the rules is fun. But for me, the most important thing is learning the rules and then breaking them. I love just like saying, what if, like, what if I did this? Or what if I had a camera and I took a picture and I left the shutter open and I rolled it down the, you know, the ground. I mean, it's not good for the camera, but anyways, this next series is, was kind of, I've been doing it for like 20 years. So, um, these are all self portraits. And what I would do is, you know, you know, scanners where you scan documents and stuff. So what I do is I, stick my face in the scanner. So I'm like literally at night, it's two o'clock in the morning, and I'll get the scanner, 
and the scanner light goes. And what you can do is you move your face and now get different crazy things. And after that, I take it into Photoshop, which is a really cool program. If you guys ever get a chance, Photoshop, you know, you can do so many really cool things with it. Um, you can get lost with it too, you know, I ended up like six hours later all of a sudden, you know, it's time to take the kid to school or something. And um, so I'm scanning my face in and, and manipulating in Photoshop, uh, mashing it with other, other pictures, um, you know, just messing around. And it, it, they're kind of like meditations on where I was at in my head. Um, Cause I'm now a, a night owl. I really like, this is super early for me. I'm probably gonna go home and take a nap after this. Um, I know you guys can't, so. Um, but, so I'm, I'm usually up at two o'clock in the morning and it drives my wife crazy cause you know, I always come in and wake her up. Anyway, there's, a, there's my son on the right. There's, this is a good parenting tip is take your uh, two year old son and stick his face in the scanner. That's probably, so we do that, and oh, here's a good one. Here's, uh, here's uh, me at uh, 14, and it says, not a care in the world. Uh, gotta like the puka shells and long feather hair. That's the California look way back when. So, so these, are all, these are all, you know, sc scanning on my face, and this, has been a tw this, will, this will be a, a lifelong project. So, you know, as I age, you know, you'll see, you know, I'm of a certain age now, and then, you know, 20 years from now, I'll, I'll, uh, it'll be a lifelong project. And hopefully, you know, it, it, it can be shown somewhere and it'll be a long-term project. Oh, wait, how'd that get in there? There's, uh, there's Noah with a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to that one. He told, he told me I could put that one in. All right. So, um, so these are still the scanning pictures. And, you know, like I said, with Photoshop, you can do crazy things. Okay, so the next series I started to do, and of course I'm going to back, oh, when I was a kid. So when I started, started first shooting photography, you know, we didn't have digital, you know, there was no such thing as, it's so funny now when I take a pic, like I'll take pictures with my film camera where you actually have to use film. And so I'll take a picture and then my kids will be like, oh dad, let me look. So, Cause you know, they want to look at the screen right in the bracket. And I'm like, well, that's not how it used to work. You know, you take a picture, you gotta go get it developed and then you can see. So anyways, this series I shot with slide film, which is you have, you have negative film, which you see is the negatives. And then you have slide film, which are positives. So what you see is what you get. And so going back to breaking the rules, I would physically take the, the slides out of the, you know, they had the holders, and I would sandwich them together, creating multiple exposures. So, so this image here would be, we were driving down the, the five, and, and, then, and then I would go around and take close-ups of stuff. So like this is a rusted metal, piece of rusted metal with holes in it, and I would sandwich it together, and it kind of gave it a, a painterly feel. And then there's these, like this one, there's these, I don't know if, if today when you go around on the sidewalks there's these vents and they come out of the ground and they're like this and they have holes and they got this really cool oxidation on them so I would get up close and take a picture of the holes and then I would sandwich them with landscapes and give them a kind of a different thing and this is the grapevine on the five and um, you know rusted metal and these are some of these are here up here so I'd also drive through car washes I love well, getting my you know car clean, for one. But then, as the car wash is going, I would be taking pictures of the windshield as the as the rain would be, I mean you know the water would be going, and I take close up of those, and then I take pictures of flowers, and then I sandwich them together, and then so these are flowers in the back, but you wouldn't even tell they're kind of like you you know your mind's kind of going uh, I kind of recognize what's going on there, but it's also abstract. So you have that going on might recognize these trees right next to Cal State. So, that, <laughs> this is the inside of an abalone shell. I don't even know if you've seen one. They've got these really cool patterns and they have holes. You see how much those together. So like I said, I, you know, the kind of the norm of take, I love it all. I love all types of art. I love straight photography. I love, I love it all. But you know, for me, it's like more painterly stuff. You know, I'm, I'm mostly a photographer now, but more, I just use photography as a tool 
than straight. But I also do straight stuff too. I mean, it's whatever I can. Every, everyone asks me, like, how do you come up with those ideas? What, I, you know, why would you think of that? And I'm, I tell them I don't know, but here's a picture of the inside of my brain. So if you want to look closely, you can actually... I used to get MRIs in my brain to see if there was stuff happening. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, then another series. So there are things called photograms. And these are completely different. These are actual photographs. They're generally photographs. But you don't use, you don't use a negative. You don't take it with a camera. What you do is make an exposure directly on the photographic paper. So, so what I would do is, I like it back here because my voice sounds deep and grand. Anyways, so what I would do is, these, this is a, a photogram, and this is photographic paper, light sensitive. So what I would do is I'd be in my garage, and it has to be completely dark when you have this out, because if you don't, then it, then it, you know, it exposes it, it's all black. So what I would do is I lay them on the ground, and I'd have all these different colored gels, which gels are different colors like red, yellow, green. And I would cut them up and, and pour them on and I would use sand and I'd pour sand on it and all this different crazy stuff. And then I would expose it to different colored light. So you would take a flashlight or whatever and put gels on that and you're doing this and you're doing crazy things. And it's a lot of experimentation. Like, I, you know, a lot of times I don't know what I'm gonna get like, it's not instant gratification with, with, with digital because you take a picture and you know what happens. With this, you do it, you have to put it back in a box, you have to turn the lights on, and then you have to go get the chemicals, and then you have to turn the light back off, and then you have to put it in the developer, and then you have to count to 20. I'm like, one, two, three, four, and then you have to put it in the developer, and then you turn on the light, and you're like, oh, that's awesome. Not very often. So you get, oh, that's awesome. And then nine times out of 10, you're like, Ugh. but you know, the one time you get it, it's, it's so cool. So this, this is a whole series of that, uh, you know, in the, in the dark room. And this is another photogram, which is actually completely different looking. Like these ones look like galaxies to me. You know, they look like nebulas and stars and stuff. This one was different where I actually laid a, a plastic picnic plate right on top of the paper and then I shot a line, uh, uh, light through it and that created that image and then I used different colors and I literally like you're painting with light. So you're taking yellow, well the problem is is, is with this paper everything's, everything's opposite because it's negative. So yellow, I don't even know what yellow, it might be green, a green gel would make yellow, a blue gel would make red and then you paint with it and then you have to develop it. So these are all different kinds of experimentations. That's another picnic plate, and I would, I also poke holes through <coughs> uh, tin foil. So you poke holes through tin foil, and then you lay it on top, and then shine it through, and that creates like little holes and stars. While we're looking at these, I wanted to tell you, if you guys are ever interested. And like when I was a kid, <laughs> this is my, you know, it took me six, I walked six miles in the snow to get the school story, but you know, born and raised in Long Beach, so there was no snow. Anyways, we used to make movies, we used to make karate movies, da da but it was so hard, you know, we had to actually shoot on film or video. If you guys want to make movies right now, it is so easy to do. I mean, you guys can make a movie on your phone, you shoot it, or your iPads, you can shoot it, and you can load it into the computer, and you have editing programs, and then you can put it on YouTube. Oh my God, I so wish I was your age guys right now, because it's so much, I can't imagine how it's gonna be like in 20 years where you literally like stick a, a you know, a flash drive in your head, and you just think about it, and it downloads it. But, uh, Oh, just if, if you have any ideas, let's go out, to, out there and do it because it's just so easy, you guys. It's unbelievable. Anyways, these are long ones. So these are these are like this one or that long one over there. So that's a that's a photograph. So that's a long, it's just a huge piece of paper, and I'll roll it out 
and I'll do it. And then I have this huge drum. It's like this black drum and it's about this big around. And I have to put the paper in there and put the processing in there and I roll it out. Two o'clock in the morning, I'm on the grass, getting my workout, got my headphones on. I'm surprised no one's called the police because this crazy man's out on the lawn. Um, anyways, these are really big pieces. Because, uh, you know, like I wanted, to, I wanted to change it up. I didn't want to do these small ones. So I'm like, okay, let's just go bigger. Let's do something else. So these, these last couple of images are um, just more messing around in Photoshop, taking images that I've shot over the years and sandwiching them in Photoshop and just messing around. And like I said, in Photoshop, you can, you can do so many you know, great things. Thanks for, I mean, I just, you know, like I said, bottom line is if you want, I know you guys are at a, a technical school and that's, you, this school is awesome. I mean, I went to Wilson and it's nothing like this. This school is amazing. I know, you, and but you know, art's super important. You know, there's there's a place for it. And like I said, if you want to create, do it for yourself because that's the most important thing. And if you think it's it's good for you, that's what's important. And you know, whether other people say, you know, because art is so subjective. I mean, I could show this stuff to, I've shown all this stuff to people, and they're like, what is that? You know, that's nothing. You know, and then I've had other people go, that's amazing. So, like I said, go out and create, and TGIF, have a good day. Thanks for having me. If I was her, I'd rather be with nobody. But then I realized I'm with nobody. I was feeling sad and depressed with no real reason except that I'm alone, and that's no reason. Just one look at them together made me realize, hey, things could be a lot worse, and I'm better off than many. And I know what you're thinking. What if things could be worse? Shame on you, you pessimists. If things couldn't be any worse, then they can only get better. So the next time you're feeling sad about life in general, take a look at all these happy people doing happy things. You'll cheer up real fast.